Okay, so you've just set up Monit. You've added some configuration. You have created some monitoring rules. And you've enabled the Monit HTTP daemon or web server. It's the Monit specific web server, which allows you to see monitoring information and some nice little graphics. Using something like wget on the server or curl, you can see that that server is up and running. But how do we actually connect to it from our local machine here, from our administration machine? We've intentionally configured things so that you can't just type in your server's IP address and go to port 2812 in a browser. Because if you could do that, anyone on the internet can do that. What we're gonna do is use one of SSH's amazing tricks to forward the port on that server, 2812, to our local machine so that we can access it on the local machine. You can think of this as basically glomming together a remote port halfway across the world on a different server and setting up a local port so that by accessing that local port, everything you do is streamed back and forth through that encrypted tunnel to the remote port on the other side. You can think of SSH here in the middle and this is your side and this is the remote side. By talking in here, it's like a phone line that goes to there on the remote host. Until now, you've probably thought of SSH as simply a program where you type in SSH remote user at remote host and it gives you a shell on that server. Well, it can do a whole lot more. There's actually so much that entire books have been dedicated to talking about all the cool things you can do with SSH to make things easier, save yourself time, or set up cool infrastructure things. A great book on this is SSH Mastery by Michael Lucas. You should check that out. What we've basically done is pasted this part in the middle of the command that you're already used to for SSH. The L is for local forwarding, which means we're taking a remote port and sticking it onto our local host. In this example, it would be local port 1234. If you talk into that, it comes out on your remote server, remote host, port 2812. So let's go ahead and craft the command that we're gonna use. Here I've picked local port 8383. So that's localhost 8383 is gonna be port 2812 on this remote server here, a remote server. Your IP address will obviously be different. Just use the same one you've been connecting to this whole time. So SSH, local forwarding, local port 8383 on localhost gets port 2812 on the host which we get when we log in with this username and IP address or host name. You can add a dash n at the end if you don't want a shell, otherwise this will log you in and create this tunnel in the background. In addition, I don't mind a shell, so we can just log ourselves in here. You can see key-based login is still working. Now, when we go ahead and open a new tab, I'm just use saying Control Shift T for a new tab in my terminal here. I'll run netstat, and I can see here, I have a port, localhost, port 8383. This is the IP address for localhost. 8383, listening with my SSH tunnel here with the process ID. So now I can just open up a browser, type in localhost colon 8383, that means access port 8383 on localhost using HTTP. Your browser obviously uses HTTP. And let's use the username Dave and the password which we specified on the server. This is why I left myself a shell. I think we're gonna grep allow in etc monit, monit rc. So here's the password we need, Dave and that password. That's our allow line. So Dave and that password. And you can see our Monit dashboard right here. We've got these system stats that I talked about, basic system load, CPU, memory usage, swap that we're using. This would be bad if you saw this processes and uptime, 
that we're monitoring. So our Nginx process, how much of the CPU it's using, PHP FPM, how much memory it's using, and our MySQL host online with all services. So this is basically going in and speaking MySQL protocol on port 3306 to verify that everything is working. You can click to get a little bit more information on each of these, but it's a very simple thing. You can see if you have any errors, if you've got any alerts, those will be sent to you, provided you have a server where there is a mail program that can send mail. But this should give you an idea of how to very quickly get a monitoring server set up, configured, and then have a monitoring dashboard that you can access securely with this cool SSH command to see what's going on. There's lots more to say about SSH in general, which we simply can't cover here, but look at that command and just come up with a couple ways that it can be useful. I can think of 10 ways that I've used this in the last five years off the top of my head, which are very useful. For example, if you've got a potentially vulnerable web application, your developers have pushed it to a test server, but they don't want to make it available to the internet, that server is behind a firewall, let's say, or on a private network or VPN, well, you can just very quickly, if you can SSH to that test server, then you can simply forward that port, do local forwarding just the way we did now, and map it to a port, say port 80 on your desktop machine, then you can just say localhost in your browser bar, you don't even have to specify 80 because it's the default web port, which your browser will try to use if you don't specify a port, this colon port syntax. You can access this website behind a firewall and bypass that firewall and anything else and view that potentially vulnerable site on your machine. There's a million other uses, it's just a quick example. So here's the local forwarding command one last time. And congratulations, you've got a full-fledged monitoring system that you can build out in whatever way you'd like. Be sure to check out the additional resources I've got for further reading on Monit and monitoring in general. I'll see you in the next lesson.